There's not very many cool spots, but when I was taking the animal part, I mean, it was almost hot, but tucked in here, this meat that I've had here for a few minutes is cool to the touch. So just this slate piece of slate here. Anyway, nice cold little pocket here that I can tuck all this into. Got another quarter down here, just tucked up in here. What I'll do is I'll let it cool down while I'm breaking down the rest of the animal. And then once it gets cooled down pretty good, I'll take one piece out at a time, debone it, get it back in there and get it nice and chilled, put it back in the bags and then haul butt back down to the bottom. I'm back. Well, up here, boy. Welcome to the wall door. I got two minutes left on this camera. Forgot all my memory cards. Gonna have to make it quick. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. More like this. That's a bad day right there. Hungry eat, thirsty drink. Cold, make fire. This week, I'm in West Texas, continuing my hunt for javelina and audad sheep, also known as the Barbary. It's early April, and although there is a storm front blowing in today, the forecast is calling for hot, hot, hot. It could possibly even hit 100 degrees this week, and there really doesn't seem to be much shade for reprieve. I've never really spent much time in this part of the country, and I've never had the opportunity to hunt a sheep species before. From what I've been told, the Audad sheep is a unique desert dwelling creature that is very unpredictable and lives in some of the most unhospitable territory. It seems like everything here is pokey or sticky, and it looks like there must be dozens of varieties of cactus to deal with, including this very sneaky glutamus pocus. I'm on this hunt with my younger brother Boyd, and he and I are used to hunting the desert country, and we're no strangers to dealing with the heat, wind, or any other element that Mother Nature can throw. But this hunt just feels different. Different by the fact that where we typically hunt out west, we have millions of publicly owned acres to roam. But here where the state is a majority privately owned, our movement is quite limited. We're not having any troubles finding sheep, but unfortunately for us, they are across the canyon and on another piece of private property that we don't have permission to be on. Oh, yep, there's the baby, there's the baby. Oh, that was awesome. Right under him, right in front of him. I hope you get that. Where? He's right up there on the very top. See? Yeah, I'm filming him right now. This is a first-hand experience for Boyd and I to have to pay to play the game and an uncomfortable taste of what we as hunters might have to deal with if our public lands are ever turned over to the states and ever enter into the hands of private party ownership. Well, first day is kind of coming to a close. Neat country. I mean, there's so much undulation and just dips and crevasses. I saw a few this morning, but the cool thing about this area is it's just wide open. I mean, there's so much country to hunt. But the bad thing is, is I'm limited to the area where I have permission to hunt. This part of the country is 90% plus 
private land. So I've got permission to hunt certain properties, but like this whole mountainside, I can't touch. I've got this back here, you know? And uh, so that's gonna be the difficulty for this week. And the frustration maybe is you're limited to certain places where you can be, but the animals could be anywhere. I mean, there's so many deep little cuts. So just need to hike around. Glad I didn't see any rattlesnakes or anything. But once I find, you know, a group of animals, then I'll kind of stay put and stay in that area. Decide if I want to spike out onto the mountain or just keep sleeping in the, the truck. So hike on out, maybe catch a javelina through the bottom here. Saw lots of tracks, haven't seen any. But as dry as it is, those tracks could have been there a month ago. So let's see if I can catch this last little bit of light. We designed the Solo Hunter Bino Harness to be ultra functional in the field, particularly for bow hunters. It needed to be low profile, compact, super quiet but durable, and have one handed operation. I think for the most part, we nailed it. A little silhouette of what I deal with. I've got the rifle on the back, walking stick, and camera. Just like that. Got up to the top of this ridge here. I'm gonna kind of sneak up over here, stay in low profile, and pop over, do some glassing. And then I'm gonna look back at this uh, ramp back over here where I was at yesterday. If I don't see anything down in this pocket over here, then I'm gonna go up to the top of that. Oh, here comes the heat. Sun's really beating down now, so that point way right over there. Last night I was on the back side of that, hunting a really cool piece of property. The funny part is, if there's no animals on this you know, section, then a guy just climbed around, sneaking around with a video camera and binoculars for nothing. That's kind of the way hunting is. There's no guarantee that there's gonna be an animal anywhere. And so you have the two sides, the side that here's a guy dressed up in camouflage sneaking around with a camera and binoculars looking for something that's not there. But if that something is there, then that's where the excitement lies. So here we go. Got that up here. Go see what it was. I'm sure it's an odd ad. Actually, this carcass is really pretty helpful because I've never shot an odd ad before. Taking a look at a little bit at their anatomy and that kind of thing, but you can see how high their backbone is, the vertebrate, before it gets to the rib cage. So that, that big hump on his shoulders. You hit something through here, you might break him down, but it also might just blow right straight through. Like you can see right here, it looks like somebody hit him right through there and then probably broke a rib somewhere there. But there's really, you know, a third of the way down the body before the vitals even start. So plus, if you look at the pictures and everything, they've got that really long mane, so. I think rather than going off the main, depending on how long that is, because you don't know this time of year in the spring, they could be rubbed off a little bit or whatever, but you know the top of that back. So I'm gonna go down six, eight inches before I even start and track down into the, the vitals from there. So that's really, I'm glad that I saw that because you can see things on pictures and all that and see people shoot them, but also your, Vitals window is actually pretty small on such a, a large bodied animal. So this doesn't look like a, it was a huge sheep, but you just take all that information into proportion. I'm all 
close to the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and change out lenses. I use a different lens for uh, filming out there than this lens here. It's really hard to find, you know, a good <coughs> lens that's gonna give you 12 to 18 millimeter as well as 200 to 300 or like this lens I'm going to put on a 400 millimeter. It's hard to get that variation and keep good quality and there are some good lenses out there that, that give you that but if I found that if I just switch out between my interview lens which is here which is a more of a prime type of a lens to my L series 400 millimeter lens my video quality is so much better but the uh, production difficulty is so much higher too because just in cases like this you do have to stop and take time to, to change the lenses out because if I were to pop over this ridge now and there was a sheep there that I could shoot this even if he's 100 yards 150 yards this lens all he would be would be a speck out there but if I had this other lens on there's absolutely no way I could do any interviews or talk to the camera. So that's just the way I choose to do it. And it can give you as frustrating as hell sometimes. Keeping your rifle protected, clean, and dry while hunting is a big priority. But so is having the ability to get at it quickly when you need it. That's where the rifle cover comes into play. I have this thing on my rifle all the time. Until it's time to pull the trigger, this rifle cover is on my rifle. Well, I had a big change of plan. I was up there on the top. Snuck over, didn't see any sheep, saw a few deer down the bottom. And then I glassed back across here where I was at uh, yesterday morning along those cliffs. And there were some sheep bedded right up underneath the cliffs here in the shade. So I came back down this whole ridge and uh, now I'm gonna go up this cut. I've already been going up a little ways because I'm excited to finally see some sheep after two days. And this actually is day three. And so just hauling up here and going through all these rocks, trying not to get bit by a rattlesnake and uh, decided I better pull out the camera and film because I hope to kill up here and not have to come up this bottom again because this is pretty creepy, but it's neat. You can see where when it rains, the water just fills up in here. All collects down in these little bottoms. It hasn't been that long ago that there was water here, a week or so ago and uh, collects here so these deer and, and the sheep can come down and get water if they need it. But that's one neat thing about these Audad that I didn't know is uh, they've got capability of, of producing a lot of moisture and a lot of water from the foods and the browse that they eat. So they really don't have to have standing water very often at all. So I'm kind of excited to, now that I've hunted them more, so there's another little pocket deep cut they're a cool animal in, in some just dang awesome country the desert country that I that I really like the cliffs right up here they're bedded down lower those cliffs actually go down farther than what you can see here but that's what I wanted to do was drop down to the bottom sneak up this bottom find a find a big boulder or something to pop up by and hopefully be within within shooting range should be two three hundred yards so get after it turn this baby off
For information on Solo Hunter rifle covers or our Bino harness system, or to find us on social media for exclusive photos and videos, connect with us on our website at solohunter.com. I didn't, I mean, I glassed and glassed and glassed, didn't see anything else up here. And so I just, I knew that there was the two, so I just picked the bigger of the two and uh, waited for them to feed out. I just laid down the rocks down there, set up the camera and kind of crawled forward. And uh, wasn't, I didn't want to take any chances. As soon as that one presented a shot, I just whacked it and it dropped it. It's laying right up here above me in the rocks to be able to come down here just on a phone call of, of looking for some property to hunt. And you can see it's just wide, wide open country. This is all wild lands. There's no fences whatsoever. These are wild sheep, free ranging. They could be here today. They could be 10 miles over there tomorrow. First kill, no, second kill with the summit. First one was close, about 120 yards. This one was over 320. Last time I ranged it was 325, so. Pretty good little poke, but the rifle is definitely capable of more. Now I'm gonna get up to the sheep. <laughs> Let's not have a scree side come down on top of me. That's bad. That's a bad day right there. All right, camera's going away. Stinky you. Pretty neat. Knew it wasn't huge, that's for sure. Take advantage, knock one down, and now the rest of the week, I can find that big ram. But it's tough, I mean, she's stinking. Just wide open country, look at this. Other than just these few buttes, it's just nothing, it's just dry as bone. <laughs> Take this back off. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Right here, I guess. Look at Sweet horns, man. That's awesome. Wore my lucky hat. Hadn't worn this hat all season. I was wearing all my solo hunter hats, but this seemed to be the lucky hat. Cool, man. Ended up being a U. It's hard to tell from 350 yards how big they are gonna be and not hunting them before. Pretty awesome. Wasn't gonna pass it up. Got the tag, got the time. I go after a, a ram tomorrow and for the next couple of days, so. Just really a sweet animal, man. Beat up a little bit, didn't break her tips or anything. Pretty, this is my first sheep species. Awesome. Try not to dump anything down the mountain. <clears throat> it's just really neat country, sheep country, for sure. And my first sheep species sitting right here behind me. Pretty neat. I've got to say that despite the limitations and frustrations of not being able to go after that first big ram, this hunt has been awesome. For one, I was able to spend some time with my brother, but we were also able to fill the coolers with some meat and experience a new land and learn about such an amazing animal as the Audad sheep. By the time this week was over, we've already secured our spot to come back. Next time, I'll be here in November to hopefully catch them during the rut and finally fill a dream of bagging a big mature Audad ram. This is the hard part. I get to do the pack out twice. <sighs> Fun part's over. Now it's just a matter of watching for rattlesnakes. <laughs>